I'm on a 1,200-mile journey from Seattle to Los Angeles. This is the final stretch of my five-week trip, and I'm traveling from the Mojave Desert to the great metropolis of Los Angeles. Ah, uh, there's my team waiting for me. For the final part of my journey, I glimpse the glamour of Hollywood's high life. Cruise down the beach in a vintage hot rod. It goes, yeah. Cool, nice, Sam. And chase breaking news with an eye in the sky TV legend. So what's happening now on your uh, street? Well, this is a perimeter for a robbery suspect. I'm traveling south through the Mojave in Southern California. But just before I leave this magnificent desert and head back to civilization, I've come to a racetrack 70 miles north of Los Angeles. Once a Wild West stagecoach stop, Willow Springs is now a world-famous racing track with 600 acres of tarmac to tear up. This place is home to a stunt car school where the tough guys and gals of Tinseltown have been learning their trade. At the head honcho here is a man behind some of the silver screen's maddest and baddest action scenes ever. Veteran stuntman Rick Seaman. Ah. Hey, David. Rick, main man. How are you, sir? All right. Good, welcome. Well, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the stunt driving school. Rick's place has the distinct air of an old scrapyard and his beaten up bangers look like they've seen a bit of movie mayhem. But don't be fooled, this is where Hollywood glamour gets in gear and where the very best stunt people and movie stars come to hone their driving skills. We've had some pretty big name actors out here that we trained, uh, Vin Diesel, we had The Rock out here. We've had Tom Cruise out here. 85% of our students are working stunt people. Sometimes you have to have the stunt driver. How important are they, do you think, in the scheme of a, of a big movie? Well, very important because, for one, you don't want to put your actor in jeopardy because he's He's already been cast. He's already he's already acted in half the movie. If he gets hurt and has to leave the show, we're dead. Yeah, yeah. And stunt people are expendable. <laughs> you you if said I'm, it. If I'm doubling you and I break a rib, next. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's time for me to learn some stunty stuff. We have a red stunt car for you here. I'll get you warmed up in it. You're going to keep it on four wheels, though, aren't you? Yes. You're not doing, you know, we're not rolling over. No, we won't do that. Okay. Unless you really want to. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to change that. Drive for... a car, the tire's gone. That's how we do it in the class. We go to blow. We go to blow. Don't worry. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Don't worry, he says. I've already got a blown tire before I start. Normally, Rick allows three days to train an actor, but given I'm a former car mechanic, he reckons we can crack the basics in just a morning. The people that become the best stunt drivers are the people who understand how an automobile works. Yeah. Mechanically. Yeah. Because you're connecting with it, and yeah. you're dancing with that car, you know. It's a lovely way of putting it, dancing yeah. with the car. Dancing That's, with the that car. That is great. Yeah. It's time to strap in. Okay, sir. Okay. Let's strap Harry in. will give you a hand over there. Okay. Right. Okay, Harry, okay. here we go. Joking aside, this is a serious business, and if you get things wrong, people can get hurt. Why did I let myself in for this, eh? Go. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Little is big. You don't need a whole lot of steering action with the steering wheel to make the car turn. You don't have to go nuts with it, right? Okay. Oh, now that I've calmed down a bit, time for the stunt driver's first base, the sliding stop. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. I can smell you burning rubber. And it smells so good. Yeah, well, you're kind. Yeah. 
stunt driving is as much about preparation and practice as driving skills. They still must be able to execute the stunt cleanly and perfectly, even under pressure, time after time. Dear, oh dear. Time to up the game. Rick's gonna show me a perfect 180 degree sliding turn. Whoops, Daisy. How about that? I hit the barrel, too. <laughs> He's hit the barrel. Okay. Let's get you behind the wheel. My last message was sue the company. How many movies have you made? Last time I counted, it's probably about 200 features. Well, I mean, I go back to James Bond, Live and Let Die, I go Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, yeah. And uh, Lethal Weapon 4. Rick has got 40 years' experience as a movie stunt driver. No pressure on me, then. All Straight the way down. All the way down. Pull it towards you. There you go. You're in stunt gear. I'm in stunt now. Yeah. Yeah. Try me as smooth as you can on the okay. gas. That's it. Nice and smooth. Small moves. That's it. Let the car do the work. Yeah, it was good. Let it go. That's me warmed up. Time for lesson number one, the sliding stop. Go. Choose. Eat. Sound back there. That's yeah. a beautiful sound. <laughs> yes, it certainly was. Rick's letting me into a trade secret only known to the few. They <laughs> 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 see what the I see what the mess of the secret. Because that brings the front brakes back. Yes. And the front brakes do all the stop. Yes. Yes. I like that. That had energy. Yeah. I'm right. beginning to understand. I had no idea how they do that. No idea. But the little secret. Well, you saw. I mean, I don't have to. We don't have to say any more, do we? No. 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 OK, I'm ready for lesson two. The 180 degree spin. Should be a piece of cake now. Did you left. Okay. You got it around. But it was a little drifty, a little yeah. lazy. That's because you only had one wheel locked up. You got to get them both locked up. It's a lot harder than it looks. I'm not getting it round hard enough. I stepped on it, but I'm not getting this wheel. I'm not. Turn that left leg into a robotic monster. Okay. <laughs> Go on, my son. Look at you! Yes! Yes! Woo! Hollywood! Here we go! Yes. Yeah! Now I've mastered the 180 degree spin, I need to add a screeching getaway. It's very good. <laughs> it's quite intoxicating. Yeah, it is. I can see why you, you know, have been doing it for so long and what the attraction is. By Jove, I think I've cracked it. Let's make a movie. Just as I thought, I got away with a million-dollar jewel heist. That sharp-eyed sheriff is right on my tail, darn it. Now I know why they do it. Bless you, sir. Well, go. Cool. Thank you, David. Uh, you did great. I mean, you were a great student. It was absolutely brilliant. No. Yeah. Oh, that is great. You're a stunt commando. I'm a stunt commando from the master himself. 
Thank you, my friend. Okay. I'm off to the UK to start my own business. Safe travels. Bless you. Thank right. you. I have left the Mojave Desert behind me and I'm heading south to my next pit stop. Welcome to Hollywood. Boy, you better leave it up before it brings you down. Welcome to Hollywood. Tinseltown, Los Angeles, City of Angels, and a million hopes and dreams. Welcome to Hollywood. Now I've cracked stunt driving, it's clear the words aren't that Britain's answer to Tom Cruise is in town. Uh, that's me, that is. Mission improbable. A limo's arrived and yours truly has been promised the full red carpet treatment. Good morning, Sir Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, oh, thank you. Of course. Onward, James, and don't spare the horses. I'm headed for Van Nuys Airport. Located 11 miles north of Hollywood in the San Fernando Valley, it ranks as one of the world's busiest general aviation airports. There are no scheduled flights from here. It's all strictly private. But if you're an A-lister like me, this is where you jet in and out of Tinseltown. Oh, yes, this is more like it. Lovely chubbly. I've come for a sneaky peek at perhaps the pinnacle of the American dream, the secret world of the executive jet. Ah, oh, there's my uh, team waiting for me. Ehab. Ahab? Yes. How do you do, David Jason? Pleasure. Hello, Julie Necessary. Julie. Pleasure. Yes, yes, you heard it right, Julie Hello, Necessary. <laughs> Straight out of a Bond movie. Thank you. Now, Julie, please, oh, after you. Thank you. This is the way to travel, isn't it, eh? Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Good Lord, look at this. Is this all set up for me? Yes, it is. We did this just for you. <laughs> this little baby is a Falcon 900EX. Price tag upwards of $35 million, and it's run by one of the world's most experienced operator of private jets, Clay Lacey Aviation. Julie here is the boss of client relations. At last, someone is getting it right. <sighs> Julie, well done. Right, so would these be beds? Yes. We have ice drawers. So we put our beverages in here. This is a little washing up department. Is that a, micro a microwave? This is a microwave convection. This is the throne room. <laughs> This beauty can take 14 people in long-haul luxury from New York to London, all in the capable hands of my pilot, Ehab Hanna. They don't make it for senior people, do they? It's too complicated for a mere mortal like me, but what is she like to fly? This particular aircraft is um, a very, very uh, stable jet. And also you have the safety features and uh, the automation helping the pilots, it really comes into play on long transcontinental, transoceanic flights. So what we're saying is, we don't need you at all, do we? We've got all the stuff here. I can just punch it in and then go and sit down and she could go and do all the work herself. Well, myself. someone has to put the landing gear down. <laughs> Otherwise, you become a uh, um, a sled. Yes. So, <laughs> but other than that, um, yeah, modern aviation. Uh, there are aircraft that actually land by themselves and uh, exit the runway on their own if they're programmed. Now I'm programmed for tea. Wonder if they can rustle me up a nice cup of char. Well, that was very interesting. So don't yes. worry. Anything goes wrong, I can take over. Wonderful. Okay. Does he know what he's doing up there? Not really. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yes. Do you know I'm getting used to this? Oh, look at this. Fresh scones. Listen to this. Served with Devonshire cream, eh? And strawberry preserves. And as if on cue, <laughs> in she comes. Here I am. Is this uh, normal what you would uh, be doing? Creating menus? Yeah. Oh, and, I mean, Yes, I always create a menu. 
Uh, I always print it out for my passengers. Uh, we don't often do like a high tea like this, but we wanted to bring a little bit of your home here in, to LA for you. So. You have, that is brilliant. <laughs> Tell you what, this service for the super rich isn't super cheap. By my calculations, for a flight to New York, you wouldn't get much change out of $50,000. Do you see very many of your personalities? I am not allowed to mention anyone's names. Uh, we do see quite a few celebrities. We see a lot of uh, very well-to-do families. Um, we also do a lot of business travel. So big corporations, it's a very useful business tool. As opposed to traveling on the airlines, they have a private plane that can just take them from A to B to C. I wish you'd tell us who you've made met famous. <laughs> We'd all like to know, wouldn't we? She won't tell us. We use a lot of discretion and, and confidentiality is, is very important to us and to our clients as well. That's why they travel this way. I'm now used to this luxury. So this will be part of my everyday needs and contracts. And uh, just waiting for the call from Hollywood. So if we're out there, Hollywood, I'm here and well, I'm ready. So I'll sit back and just relax. Clay Lacey Aviation has just celebrated its 50th anniversary. And I want to meet the living legend who first brought executive jet travel to the West Coast. Growing up in Kansas during the Great Depression, Clay Lacey developed an early fascination with flight. During his long and illustrious career, Clay became United Airlines' number one pilot. He flew more than 300 different types of aircraft and logged up well in excess of 55,000 hours flight time. If you do the sums, that's over six years in the air. He also pioneered the executive jet business on America's west coast with this legendary Learjet. Look at that, what a beauty. Ah! A friend of Hollywood stars, 86-year-old Clay Lacey. Nice meeting you, yes. David Jason. Yeah. How lovely to meet you. Thank you. When do you first fly an aircraft? Well, I started flying a seriously at 12. What do you mean? You, you actually flew an aircraft or learned at the age of 12? Yes, yeah, and then... I uh, soloed when I was 14, had my instructors and commercial license when I was 16. And it so started with United Airlines in when I was 19. In 1964, Clay brought the first luxury Learjet to LA. Lear looks for his biggest success with this little jet. Maybe because it gets Mr. Executive to work and back to the golf course faster than anything that has yet come along. The Hollywood Rat Pack were quick to buy into the glamour of it all. Frank Sinatra bought one and recently flew it to Europe and back. I had sold Frank Sinatra a Learjet. But he uh, never fl couldn't fly them. No, he did learn to fly a helicopter. Though. Did he? Yeah, he oh, was. He's a better man pilot. than I thought he was. Oh, yeah, he was a great guy. Dean Martin, of course, was his closest friend. Danny Kay, the comedian, you know, I got to know him real well. Could he fly? Was he a yeah, pilot? Yeah, I, I had to check him out in the Learjet, and he had an airplane. Clay's also the proud holder of no less than 33 world records, including one made in this very Learjet, a US coast-to-coast -coast and back-again flight in 10 hours, 22 minutes. Average speed, a staggering 556 miles per hour. That was a fun trip. L.A. to New York, four hours, 51 minutes. That included a landing. Yeah, a stop to a few. Yeah, Wichita. So it was the Wichita going over in Tulsa, coming back. This 50-year-old Learjet is compact and bijou, but it's clear Clay has a deep affection for this trailblazing plane and his extraordinary life in aviation. If I said to you, right, OK, get in there, and, uh, and everything was fueled up and everything turned around, could you, would you still want to fly her? Oh, yeah. And you could? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. I love flying. I, I've never gotten tired of it. I like the feel of freedom. I always enjoy this. Fun. Sir, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed. My pleasure.
With its high-end luxury and Hollywood glitz, Van Nuys Airport might be classed as general aviation, but for me, it's in a class of its own. I'm picking up now, when one is in Los Angeles, it would be most remiss not to visit the seaside. With miles of golden beaches, it's the perfect stage to strut your stuff. And for passionate petrol heads like me, the LA beachfront is also the spiritual home of the hot rod. This crazy, crowded city boasts thousands of vintage vehicle enthusiasts, and I wanted to meet up with one of its longest-running car clubs, the LA Roadsters. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, David. Hi. Bob and Sally Barnes count themselves amongst the club's oldest and proudest members. She likes cars as much as I do. I yeah. came from a car family, too, yeah. so... Yeah. But was it the car or him that you were attracted? Him. Him. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you have to say that because he, <laughs> he's been in <laughs> striking distance, isn't he? Right, come on, should we go and have a look at uh, sure, what it's all about? come take a look at some of the toys. Yeah. Bob reckons he's built or restored in the region of 600 motors, but the jewel in Bob's car-encrusted crown is the vintage 1930s roadster he courted his wife in 50 years ago. It is a 34 Ford which I acquired in 1965. How much did it cost you back then? About a 1,000 bucks. I traded a car for it. That's a lot of money. That was a lot of money. A Roadster has no windows. Yeah. They actually snap on the side. When the top comes on, you snap all that on. How yeah. many cylinders have you got oh, in it's there? It's an eight. They're eight? All, oh, yeah, all eight. What's the top speed you've had out of this? Probably about 122, 123. And it was still on the ground? Yeah. Of that is fast. But back then, you would have been hard up for money and you and your mates would have done all of this yourselves, wouldn't you? We'd find the poorest guy and work on his to make sure it worked. <laughs> Formed in 1957, LA Roadsters grew out of a West Coast hot rod craze. The rules were simple. You pick up a cheap old 1930s banger, squeeze in a bigger, faster engine, and then head down to the beach for some cruising and racing. Going to the movies, these cars, these hot rods, we would see them as teenagers. And my goodness, did we lust after you guys. A, because of the car vehicle, but then... Yo, there there's always are. pretty girls with the cars. Yes, yes. It's not the same uh, color scheme, is it? No, no, I've painted it seven times. I got almost 300,000 miles on the car. What was the expression back then? A babe magnet. Babe magnet, that's what I was trying to think of. But it the... works. <clears throat> and still does, I can see, you lucky man. Over the past six decades, Bob's garage has become a treasure trove of bikes, surfboards, and 60s memorabilia. Why yeah, have you got I've, so many surfboards? I've been surfing since 1954. Back in the 50s, you, you were at the, in the best time. You had the surf for the beach. You had cruising on Hawthorne Boulevard, where the Beach Boys would be a lot of times in the 60s. Plus, you had Lions Drag Strip down here, 14 miles for drag racing. It didn't get any better than that in California. So you were driving around looking like that then, were you? I never wore a shirt. You not? Never. Now, this is more like a hot rod. You yeah, see well, that's here. what my Roadster looked like the day I bought it. That's my wife. But I ran it without a hood. Yeah, well, that was my image of a hot rod. You're a cool dude. And there she is. Mm-hmm. You were a lucky fella. Yes, I was. Yes. With Bob sporting his trademark top hat, we're ready to roll. Riding in the hot rod. His beloved Roadster once featured in one of the biggest hits in television history. No, it wasn't only Fools and Horses. Listen to that. This car was in Happy Days, wasn't it? Yes, it was, the first 13 weeks. I'm actually driving with the farms. It 
goes. Yeah. Go on, nice son. Lifeguard. Have you ever been pulled up? I mean, by oh, the police. I've been stopped a ton of times. Have you? Oh yeah. Well, back in the old days, it was just a thing. If you were a hot rodder, you were going to get stopped. Yes. Now well, they look and they just see see a little old man and they go, oh, he's reliving reliving his youth. Oh, right. So they don't give me any trouble. But in turn, I don't do anything stupid. Like you used to. Like I used to. Yeah. <laughs> We've come to the weekly classic car rally down on Redondo Beach. And it's showtime, folks. This is where Bob meets up with his fellow LA roadsters. Blimey, what about this place, then, eh? This is where we come on Friday nights. Every Friday. How you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm just fine. Good. Hey, Bob, how how's you doing? everything? Pretty good. Good. Yeah, we're going to... Oh, this yours? This is my jalopy. It's beautifully restored. Have you done that over the years? I did all the work on this car myself, except the upholstery work. How long did it take you to get to this? About three years, two and three a half, years. three years. Was it money, or was it just love? Both. Both. Way. Both. Both. Yeah. <laughs> all of the above. Yeah. You can't take it with you, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Though I'm working on a plan. Yeah. <laughs> This is very much like the hot rods that I remember in my young days. I mean, in the shape of it and everything. It's not much, uh, it's very, very tinny, isn't it? Well, that's because they, they were built cheap. Because this was, a, this was for a guy's work truck. It wasn't, for, it wasn't to go to church on Sunday. What strikes me about the people showing off their beloved cars is that it goes way beyond passion. These vehicles are like members of the family, and it seems to take them back to their golden years. <laughs> this vehicle was used during the Cold War and Vietnam War. This is like a, for a recon squad going yeah. to battle, just like it is. It has the original radio, the M60 machine gun. All that gear you see in there was my gear. I was in the Army for about 36 yeah. years. All the equipment you see is a typical soldier going in. This is what you'd wear. Sir, thank you very much. That's great. Good old car. Oh, now this yeah. is this is the cool dude of the bunch, isn't it? Yep. Look at it. From Kauai. I mean, this turns a few heads, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a little fun car to drive around, and you always get the thumbs up. Look at the radiator cap he made. Look at my top, my pineapple. What a machine, though. Oh, it's beautiful. It's You've done a great job for that. Well, would you sell this, or would you keep it? Um, I would sell it. You'd sell it? Yeah. I've got about $200 oh. in the cash money. Well, you might be able to buy the front tire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Take it off. I'll take it with me. <laughs> oh, it's lovely to meet you, sir. Oh, Bless you. you. It's a lovely car. Well, have you had a good time? Oh. Are, you, are you ready to have a better time? Well, I don't know. What do you mean by better time? Let's let you drive it a little bit. <laughs> Jump right in. All right. And we'll go from there. Now, for much of my life, I fancied getting behind the wheel of an American hot rod. And now I've got my chance. I wish they all could be California. I wish they all could be California. You know what? Cruising down Redondo Beach in this American beauty, it feels like all my Christmases have come at once. Hello. See, see what I mean? It yeah. works. It works. The magic is still there. Bob. That's it. They still it. I've spent five weeks traveling down the west coast of the USA, finding stories behind the machines that made America. I've almost finished my epic journey, but there's one last story to tell. The helicopter has changed TV news gathering like no other machine, and I've come to meet Eye in the Sky legend, Stu Mundell. Main man? Sir, David Jason, good yeah. to meet you, sir. You are the voice of Danger Mouse. 
That's me, yeah. Danger Mouse. Good grief, Pento. Uh, there you go. <laughs> it seems my reputation precedes me. Stu is a bit of a gung-ho hero in the world of news gathering, and this chopper is his mobile office. This is a bigger machine than I fly. What? This is a butch machine, this is, yeah. <laughs> That obviously looks like a camera. Yeah. You control that? Yeah, I control that. This is the spot where I usually sit. Yeah. And uh, this is the controller right there. This controls that part of it. So that's your zoom, that's your focus. So it's all about breaking news. Breaking news. news. Well, well that's, that's, my, that's my little niche. Yeah. You know? He is just running, he's foot bailed. To take this guy into custody without the injuries to any civilians. So we do everything. If it's a fire, we're there. If it's a bad crash, we're there. If it's a police pursuit, we're there. Now, boom, right there. I probably hit him with a uh, less than lethal. One of the reasons why I love my job so yeah. much is because, you know, seeing something happen that other people don't see and then be able to share it, that's where, that's where the joy comes in. Stu never takes passengers, but for Danger Mouse, he's making an exception. You're gonna play with the camera? Yeah. Do some pretend news? Yeah. Stu flies the camera, not the helicopter, so here's the second half of the double act. Marcos! Hey, what's hey. happening, brother? How's it going, Stu? How are you? I'm well. Marcos? Sure. Marcos, nice Hello. to meet you. Number one pilot, I've been told. You're the main man. Come on, Marcos. Here we go. Let's make this happen. Yeah. Let's go, you boys. When a news story breaks, Stu and Marcos have minutes to race to the location and get a scoop. All right, I'll hand you your headset there. Oh, Thank man. you. Okay, I think we're ready for the off if you are, sir. All right. Wait, wait, this thing flies? Good grief. <laughs> huh? I wasn't too bad a lift. I had a friend of mine that always used to say, we're going for a magic carpet ride. Yeah. Los Angeles is so massive that even if you had 20 news trucks, you wouldn't be able to cover it all. The helicopter is the only way to get to a crime scene first. You said something on the ground, and here it is. You there. said LA is huge. Yes. And if we can just see. Oh, I'll pan up. There you go. Look at that. And this is just what we can see. I'm telling you, it just goes and goes and goes in all directions, unless you get to the water. Oddly enough, it stops there. It seems like a good opportunity to have a look at the beaches in the Pacific Ocean. The infamous Venice Beach area here in Bustle Beach, where all the guys work out, bodybuild on the... And show off to the girls. Is that what they do? Yeah, I suppose. The Santa Monica Pier. Santa Monica. That's quite a famous name. Yes, back in is. the UK. Let's see what Stu's eye in the sky camera can really do from 1,500 feet. Yeah. Let's see if we can tell what time it is. Uh, I can't see that guy's watch. But that is an amazing piece of kit. Stu's helicam is just the job for a cheeky shifty into the backyards of the rich and famous. The plots of land here next to uh, Pacific Coast Highway, back in the day, if you bought a piece of land inland, they would give you, give you a lot on the beach. Oh. Because nobody wanted to live there. God yeah. dear, really? Yeah. Today, a California dream beach hut would set you back millions of dollars. We're off Sunset Strip right now. Man's Chinese Theater. That's yeah. the Chinese Theater. Yep, right there, where they've got all the footprints and all that stuff out in the front. Very, very famous. This is the star-studded Hollywood Walk of Fame, possibly the world's most famous sidewalk. It's missing one star, of course, but I'll say no more. And that stadium is... Where we play cricket. Yeah, well, it's about time you learn to play cricket. Uh, you hitting a ball with a bit of stick uh, is not really cricket. No, it's not. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, this is the uh, famous Dodger Stadium. Oh, the Dodgers, that's yeah. it. And cool, follow yeah. me, what's this? Which right one? in front of us. Downtown Los Angeles. There's so much dosh in Tinseltown that the banks are the tallest skyscrapers. Blimey, look at that. And what do they stick on the side of the highest building west of the Mississippi? A glass slide a thousand feet up. 
there's a glass slide, so you're about 70 stories in the air. Yeah, that is great. That is really great. Stu is a great tour guide, but his day job is filming crime stories as they happen. David, here yeah. you go, brother. In L.A. County, almost 50,000 cars are stolen each year. Police pursuits are Stu's bread and butter. So this right here is your Zoom. In? Yeah, got and it. Out. Now I've got a chance to hone my skills. Surely it can't be that hard following a speeding car. So keep going, keep going, keep going. Ah, there's the freeway, keep oh, going. Oh, there you are. There you are. Yeah. Look at that, you can do a pursuit. Yeah, oh, let's you gotta pretend do now. we're doing a pursuit. There we go. I oh. can't even keep up with him. Sorry. Yeah, there he is. I wonder if that guy knows how famous he is right now. No, it's not as easy as you think. Is that him? <laughs> Definitely much easier to fly. Oh, he keeps running away. Oh, this is requiring too much concentration. Okay. <laughs> Give it back to the master. You, you. Stu began his crime chasing career 25 years ago as a freelance news stringer, finding stories by eavesdropping on police scanners. There's a story in Mid City. You guys want to go get some shots of the helicopter hover? Yeah, let's go do that. Where are they, Barcos? Point them out. Uh, two o'clock. Two o'clock. Coming up. This is a bit of luck. Eagle eyed Marcos has spotted something occurring. Oh, is that the police? Way out there. Is that the police? No, that's, that's a news helicopter, gosh darn it. Got another one. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah, he's up high, then you got a police ship down low, about 500. Well, maybe he's doing something that we ought to go and follow and get the news. Darn right. Stu's day job depends on finding a news story first. Up here, we'll listen to the police scanners. Uh, or the fire department or whatever. And then also, Marcos will talk to the police helicopter. We'll get information if they are willing to pass it along. You'll see there at the intersection uh, a bunch of cop cars. Let me see. Nine o'clock. Oh, yeah. So what's problems. happening now on your uh, street? Well, this is a perimeter for a robbery suspect. And the police helicopter above. Yeah. Officers got here quick enough so they know that the... Uh, Bad guys ran, so they are searching. And many times they'll find these people uh, hiding somewhere in the bushes yeah. if they haven't gotten away. There's no second chance with breaking news. Stu has to shoot the story as it unfolds. As far as news goes, the big secret is you get pictures of what's going to be gone first. So if you get there and there's a fire, you know they're going to put the fire out, get pictures of the fire. You get there, there's a victim, you're going to get a picture of the victim because they're going to take the victim away. We, yeah. want to, we want to see the action. And that's it. That's the big secret. Maestro Mundell is clearly unique, but I couldn't resist offering him some professional advice. I think you ought to get in a bit closer there, Stu. Uh, oh, yeah, you got to see look, what's happening there. Look, I'm getting as close as I can. Well, you can't get any closer <laughs> than that? Well, what's the matter with you? I mean, uh... I can't see the wets of their eyes. What's the matter with you? Can't you see the dead body? <laughs> oh, that would be a big no-no. We don't. We never. We never show that stuff. But uh, what happens if there was a shooter? Definitely get you a bad guy. You can get as many pictures of the bad guy as, as you want. That's open game. Well, that was exciting. What's next on my LA tour, Stu? The Hollywood Bowl. Oh, oh yeah, there yeah. it is. That's going to be Warner Brothers. They desperately want me to help them out with their help viewing them out. figures. Yeah, but I'm playing hardball. Well, I can't fly over Los Angeles and not go to see the most important view in the City of Angels. Do you know why they put that sign up? Originally, it was a real estate thing, and it said Hollywood Land, and it fell into disrepair. Yeah and the city took it over, and they got rid of the, the land part, and they just kept the Hollywood. So Hollywood land was directed by an estate agent. So. Yep, exactly. Well, you can't get much closer to Hollywood than that. The old boy finally makes it to Tinseltown.
I think you've done an excellent job. Thank you. Marcus and you, Stu. Oh, thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Absolutely. I, I'm just going to be telling all my friends that I was hanging out with Danger Mouse for guys. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm responsible for your brilliance. Yes, it was, it was in the upbringing. Yes. So, despite my great and august body of acting work, I'm remembered in America for being the voice of a cartoon mouse. Hollywood ain't calling just yet. But you know what? I don't mind one little bit. Well, I've done it. I've travelled from Seattle to here, Los Angeles, 1,200 miles. And what a journey it's been. Got kangaroo juice in that one, didn't he? I've been everywhere. That beats the lot of them. Look at that for a view, eh? You don't see that every day of the week. It's been a wonderful journey. And if you asked me, would I do it again, I'd say yes without question. And thank you for coming on this journey with me. <laughs>